It was not until 1814 that Borobudur re-emerged from oblivion when it was rediscovered by Sir Thomas Stamford Raffles, British governor of Java during the brief British interregnum from the Dutch colonial occupation during the Napoleonic Wars. What Sir Thomas found were the ruins of an ancient monument, completely overgrown by lush tropical vegetation, its galleries filled with volcanic ashes, a highly romantic site, matching the period's infatuation with the revival of antiquity. Given his genuine fascination with ancient Javanese culture, he managed to organize extensive excavations, putting some 200 men to work. The true driving motivation behind Raffles' enthusiasm may yet have been of another order. As a practicing Freemason, he had been initiated to the secret society in one of the lodges in Surabaya. The notion of possibly discovering the Far Eastern equivalent of Solomon's Temple must have been of utmost fascination to him. It would take until 1835 until the temple could be made accessible to the public, whose interest remained modest and culminated in the true sense of the word with a tea pavilion on top of the main stupa. However, once re-established in the country, the Dutch launched an extensive survey, leading to the first comprehensive, richly illustrated monography of the temple, conducted by the Museum of Antiquities of Leiden. The first photographic record on glass plates was done by Van Kinsbergen in 1873. An absolutely sensational discovery was made in 1885. J. W. Ezerman uncovered the Borobudur's hidden base, revealing 160 bas-reliefs which had been covered up long time ago by the large processional walkway terrace surrounding the foot of the Borobudur, either to give structural support to the monument endangered by collapse, or, as some scholars suggest, to hide some of the explicit sculptures which may have been deemed offending by the Muslim population. The famous photographer, K. Seifus, was allowed to create a complete photographic recording of all 160 panels before they were recovered in order to assure the stability of the monument.